The trajectory of our characters in Robert Walser's Jakob von Gunten only reveal themselves through small details of life in the Benjamin Institute. A school play organized by the students, the faculty sleeping in their rooms, observations about gymnasium and the sparse environment of the institution. Only seldom are these punctuated by periodic events, such as the little acts of rebellion against the principal Herr Benjaminta. Jakob boasts an appreciation for the small, and a disgust towards the decadent. At first, our protagonist largely conforms to the expectation of meekness, acceptance of his docility as a soon-to-be servant. He's contrasted by his brother Johan, who is integrated into the social circles of the rich. There's an acceptance, but also an appreciation of the school environment predominantly made up of boys, where camaraderie and respect shown to each other's personality is observed. Jakob admires his principal's her suit face, talks at great length about his friend Krauss's sophistication, and comments on the many other characters that populate the Benjaminta Institute. But for the most part, until the very ending, he implicitly acknowledges the humility of these scrambled observations writing about a black cat in his brother's apartment when he had visited him. He said, If I were a painter, I'd paint the intimacy of such an animal, animal image. But he isn't. Uh, he's merely a student, not a painter. A student soon to become a servant who, as he says in the beginning of the book, will never come to anything. That is to say, we shall all be something very small, subordinate later in life. Three-fifths three into the book, as the journal entries start to shift from talking about the past to talking about the present, fantastical and mysterious elements routinely are introduced, such as a mysterious boudoir and daydreams of adventures and terrifying sights. Odd behavior from Fowlin and her Benjamin to all culminate with the ultimate finale that betrays the humility Jacob had cultivated in the beginning. Like any diary, the point of Jakob's jottings isn't the anticipation of the conclusion, but the appreciation of how the past eventually becomes the present moment in the small life of these nobodies.